Lies of P is a Souls-like game set in the Pinocchio world, but it has some really unique features that unlock as you progress through the game. And one of these is the P organ. This is a full progressive skill tree with unlockables, skills and abilities. And you're going to need a ton of a currency called Quartz to unlock all these different things. I've unlocked the whole of the P organ skill tree now and I've reset it a couple of times and I've tried a lot of the different perks and skills. And I just want to go over the ones that I found to be the best and that have helped me the most and that should give you the best chance. So let's go over them. There are rumored to be 29 total quartz in the game, so you should be able to get all of these and more. Okay, so let's go over the P-Organ. Let's go over every single skill ability that I'd suggest. I've reset it so that we can go through it all together from the start. But this, I've got 20 quartz at the moment out of, I think the max is 29 that have been found in the game. And that will take us all the way into phase five. So we can go over everything and I'll talk through the sort of um, the best abilities and skills that I've tried and the, the ones that I definitely suggest as you go through. So let's start in phase one. The first thing would be the pulse cell. So this increases your max pulse cells. I think if you go through all of this and take all of them, you get 10 maximum. Maybe there's more somewhere else. But I think the max with the skills and abilities comes out to 10 total pulse cells, which is obviously huge and they'll heal for more. So with the pulse cells, you need to pick two attachments for them. Okay, so on these attachments, the first one I would go for was would be enhance the stagger attack of charges. So as you progress further in the game, staggers are really important in getting the enemy down, buying you some time to heal, buying you some time to repair your weapon. So I think stagger is quite a big one to take. Obviously dodging and blocking are important, but stagger feels really important to get the stagger built up. The next one I would go for, so you can only take one of each. So if you take something from the attack type, you can't take a second attack type, same as any other option. But the second one I would go for would be increases ergo upon eliminating an enemy one. So I would go for this as your second one. That will get you your first block and obviously you've got to climb all the way up to phase two before you can unlock the phase two abilities so this is one i'd say would be like mandatory for everybody i think everybody should go for this and i think link dodge is incredibly important so some of the big enemies do like multiple attack chains so it'd be attack and then they'd like spin and do a second one being able to dodge into another dodge is really helpful and then the slots once you've got the one those two there it's really not that important i'd say go for the ones that better help your build so for me in a dex build lower damage while dodging is huge because i'm going to be dodging most of the attacks rather than trying to block them so i'd take that and then it's it's never bad to go into stagger duration because someone can get staggered and then be in the middle of a combo and you can't get in there so stagger duration can be really helpful i'd go for that one as well and that unlocks phase two so onto phase two you've got retain guard you've got amulet slot pull cells and rising dodge I think these three are some of the best on the whole thing. And again, there's some like that I would say were mandatory for all builds in here and then some that are more niche, which we'll talk about as well. So phase two, the number one thing I'd go for is amulet slots. This is huge. You're going to realize amulets have incredible power later on. You get things like plus four motivity rings, plus four uh, amulets, plus four uh, technique amulets, which give pure damage, plus max HP, um, plus item equipment carry limit so they're really 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 important so i'd go for this first and i'd be going for first in survival enhanced pulse cell recovery so this will make your pulse cells heal for more which is huge as your uh, max health bar goes up the pulse cells will feel weaker and weaker this keeps it more in line and keeps you alive longer 100 take that first and then in the second one i would go for uh, item type and special grindstone increased effect duration so when you unlock the grindstone it's uh, a way to set your uh, weapon on fire or corrode it or give it some sort of effect, electric, things like that. This increases that duration and it can be incredibly powerful starting a boss fight and setting that boss on fire or using an element it's weak to. So I would get that. Then I'd head up here and get the pulse cells, an extra pulse cell, you know, these keep you alive. And now I'd say it's build specific again. I'd say this is again, you take stuff for your build. If you are doing a lot of perfect guards and a lot of blocking, this is really good. Enhanced guard destruction, really, really useful. And then again, if you're dodging, there's really good things for dodgers. So I would go for ability here and I'm going to take stamina consumption from dash reduced because i'm playing a dex dodgy build um, so i'm gonna be taking that one and then for the next one you want to take another thing that benefits your build there's guard regain for blocks which is really really good i mean even dex characters should be blocking i would probably go for here enhanced weapon attack or weapon attack when discharged because you're going to run out of you're going to run out of the healing and you're going to find yourself constantly having to recharge your last pull cell so i think this is really good so I'm going to go for this one. And I think you're going to you're going to see that a lot where there's there's a choice between something that's really good and mandatory and what I think every build should have. And then something that depends more on your build. And as we get into phase three, that becomes even more important because personally, I think a lot of these are bad. I don't use the cube. I don't think the cube is great. I don't use it that much. I don't really engage in the whole like gold fruit tree thing. So I don't take that. And then again, for the, you know, more golden fruit tree, I personally don't take that either. And add belt slots. I, I don't go through many consumables, so I don't see the need to have more than 
you know, a couple of, you know, the potions, maybe a, a charge and maybe a, a cure disease. Maybe that's enough. I, I don't I don't see the point in having another one. If you do, great. But what matters is what you add to it. So for me, I go for the Enhanced Pulse Cell Recovery 2. That gives our, our Pulse Cells huge healing with the, the addition we had down here. So this one is going to vary a lot depending on what you want to do. If you go in the items, you'll see a lot of things down here. Reduce prices, Legion Magazine effect, uh, uh, increase max gold coin free. If you like all this stuff, then I'm not going to tell you not to use it. But for me, I don't. So what I go for is increase Ergo and Eliminate Enemy. You're going to level up faster, more Ergo, you know, more damage in the long run, more survivability. So I would 100% take that. Then I would go into survival and I would go down here, increase pulse cells three. This is an additional pulse cell. So you see, we're really building up the amount of healing we can do. So I'd go for that one. And then the final slot, I would probably take something in attack. Again, if you're into all that stuff, go for it. I would go for something in attack. The perfect guard is really good if you're doing a lot of blocking. I like, again, the charge stagger. More stagger is, is really powerful. So I'd go for that one. So now we get controversial because <laughs> I don't like these three. So I step it back and I would take a third one from phase two. If you take, so I guess it's not clear on here. It looks like you need to take a phase three to get into phase four. You don't. So you can step it back if you don't like those three and take rising dodge, which I think rising dodge is a hundred times better than any of this. So I would take rising dodge and you get two slots to choose from, but you can choose from the rank threes. Even though we didn't take a rank three up here, you can take a rank three attachment to put it into a rank phase two ability, right? So I think I think for me, what works really, really well, and you know, a lot of people don't want to go into defensives because you know you, you just want to one shot everything. There's some rough bosses. There's bosses that are gonna put constant fire damage on you. They're gonna freeze you. They're, they're gonna electrocute you. They're gonna do something called shock, which reduces your stamina recovery. They're gonna do a lot of stuff that really mess with decay, which. Uh, removes the durability on your weapon. I think attribute resistance is huge. So I would probably take attribute resistance or special resistance. I think both of these are really, really good. If you can fit them in a build in, a, in an area where, you know, you've taken the best stuff and now you're not sure what else to take, I think it's really good. So I would take attribute resistance here. Now, when, when you're looking at the attacks and everything you can take, one thing I really like, and I mean, these are good, like the, the guards are really good if you're doing a strength, you know, motivity type build. I like to go, I like going all the way back at the top and taking fatal attack one more fatal attack damage. I, I think that's really, really good. So I, I take that here. Really weird combination here, but it unlocks phase four, so it works. In phase four, there are three, which I think are amazing. So you've got uh, amulet slots two, uh, fable slots two, grindstone use is increased, and guards cause stiffness. So I think amulet slots are the number one thing. I would take this every time over every other thing on the game. So, and you can pick from the rank four stuff. So straight into item type, you can go down here and you can see this is mostly just itemy stuff, throwing, consumables, gold coin fruit. So you can ignore all that unless you're into it, uh, unless you're specifically trying to do stuff with that. Now, phase four has got some flops, uh, but it's got some really, really good ones. So the, the ones I think really, really, really good, increased pulse cells, an extra pulse cell. I'm going to keep telling you to take this because it's just going to keep you alive longer. So that'd be number one. Then I would go into attack and I would get down to here and I would go for lowers natural recovery when weapon attacks. So that means as you deal damage to the enemy, they don't recover. You're going to find so many enemies in the game where you chip away at them and they keep all of that health as a pale red bar. And they're going to start regaining that health when you back off. And you're going to have to back off on some fights. So I think that's really good for just being able to keep the pressure on an enemy. I personally don't really like much of the, the phase four stuff in here. I, I think there's multiple really good survival and attack ones, but ability and item I think are kind of weak. So I'd go back up to... To here to, to phase one uh, abilities and I would get lowest charge attack stamina consumption. I think that's really, really good. So you can use less stamina when you attack. Then you've got a choice. You can do a lot of perfect guards. There's this one, there's the increased grindstone uses I think is huge. So I think this is most important for, for me. If you're into those two, go for it. But let's talk about the ability slots. You can now get another survival and attack, which are the main ones here. You go down to survival, auto charge pulse cells when discharged. This is absolutely huge. This is good as well if you're doing perfect guards, but this is crazy. This means that when you run out of pulse cells, when you hit like zero and you, you know, you've got nothing left in the tank, it will start coming back naturally. As you deal damage, it comes back as well. So I think this is amazing. I've won so many boss fights from having this. So I definitely take that. And then I take an, uh, an attack. I'd go down to the attacks. If you're, if you're going to be out of pulse cells a lot, I think this one is, it's really, really good. Again, there's loads of Fable stuff here, but I never find myself having much Fable. And I, I prefer the consistent things and that's going to save save my life a lot. So I take that. 
And then the last one I think is really good is as we're here, we're getting a second use of the grindstone, which means during a fight, we can grindstone, special grindstone twice. So you can set your sword on fire twice. And then if you combine this with this special grindstone durability recover, when you set your sword on fire, you're also going to repair it. So this is massive and you can do it twice in a fight. So you don't need to worry about that awkward moment during a fight where you've got to stay back and repair your weapon. So I take that. And that unlocks rank five. Now, once you get here, you are going to have about nine quartz left. So you can see here, I've got one because I still need to get a few more that are like hidden around the map. But you're going to have nine left for phase five if you've done it the same way as me. If you've taken an extra one here, you're going to have eight left for this final one. So you'll be able to take two. Um, but yeah, so let's let's go through them. You've got le extra legion arm, which is huge if you're using the legion arm and even good if you're not. So you'll get multiple uses out of two weapons rather than just one. Increase cube uses. I think that's terrible. I don't use it. And then increase guard regain. Amazing if you're doing a big blocking build. And then staggerable window, which I think is the, the winner here. I think this is the main one. So I for my build, I'm going to take this one and probably this one. So let's start here by looking at them. I've not got this stuff to buy them right now, but let's look at them. So if we go down to the bottom, if we go down to the bottom of the, the, the phase five abilities, you're going to see it's not great unless you're specifically going into coin fruit and you're taking all that stuff. Unless you're really going in on fable, you've got fable stuff here. Ergo loss on death, I don't think is important. This game really doesn't punish you that much. You can easily get your ergo back in most situations. So I don't think the items are that good, but we do have some amazing attacks, amazing survival and amazing ability there. They really bring it out in phase five, unfortunately. How I'm going to run this is I'm going to take uh, survival and I'm going to take lowers damage while dodging. I'm going to take increased pulse cells and I'm going to take in ability. I'm going to take lowers charge attack stamina consumption and in attacks, I'm going to be taking stagger duration and fatal attack two. That's going to be the best ones for me. Obviously, once you get into this final one, it really depends on you. I mean, you, you might find yourself really heavy on the defense and, you know, you might take defense. You might go up here and you might take perfect guard stiffness. You know, you, you might go here and get guard regain one and fully, fully agree. They're amazing abilities and you should take them. I, 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 if you're taking a strength build, if you're really good at blocking, that's the way to go. But yeah, I just wanted to make something that kind of it kind of breaks down what the full skill tree looks like, how you should plan ahead your build, some of the things you 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 should definitely be taking, and then somewhere it's more your choice. I think there's definitely some things which are. I mean, I mean, everybody wants extra pulse cells, right? Everybody wants these uh, extra pulse cell recovery things like that. But then there's stuff that's build reliant, and you know, you might never ever want to use this grindstone. You might never want to set your sword on fire. So. It, don't take it. Uh, but yeah, this is how I think it works really well. I think this is a good balanced build for, for most builds. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. If I've missed something major here that you take and, you know, is, is, is amazing. I haven't tried every single thing on every build. But if you've taken something and it works really, really well, if you've gone all that I'm blocking and you feel like a god, let me know down below. But that's the video. This is a, a brief overview with a deep dive into the skill tree, you know, the P organ. But yeah, I hope it's helped. I hope you're enjoying Lies of P. Take care. And I'll catch you in the next one.